Is the tea all right? It's a it's licorice thing. I like it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, hello again. Welcome to Writing Off the Deep End. Uh, this is Mary Thaler. And this is Jeffrey Edwards. <laughs> and we're going to talk about end writing endings. That's right. So you, if you're a writer, you know that feeling of having a great idea and it's so compelling. You, you sit down and you start writing and, and often you start off with a burst of energy and, and yeah, you get a massive amount done. Uh, and, and often you know the beginnings of the story mm -hmm. quite well, but mm -hmm. you get fuzzier about the later part of the story, right? Right. I, I think there's a, a wise uh, say, saying out there that the last 10% is 90% of the work. Right. Or something yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what does an ending have to do? It has to um, answer most of the questions. You usually have more than one yeah. storyline, yeah. and you have to bring all of them to a close. Yes. Right? So, um, I mean, you might have a single one, but often you have more than one that you have to close up. You might have one for... If you have one main character, then you have to have an emotionally satisfying ending for them. But the more characters you've got, uh, and the more side plots, the more threads you have to... Yeah. So you together. have to finish up. So even on a single novel, where you're writing a single novel, you want to have this satisfying conclusion. It's, it's not necessarily an easy thing to do. No. So, so there'll be a, a, the moment of, of the highest sort of emotional investment and excitement, um, and, and then you have to let it down. Yeah. And you have to let it down not so quickly that the reader feels dropped, yeah, so, but you also don't want to ramble on. So how much yeah. denouement do you put in mm -hmm. in order to make the, the, the reading feel uh, complete? I've written some stories where the climax happens and there's a paragraph after and then it's done, yeah. uh, which feels very short. Yeah. Uh, but I've also written other stuff where... You know, it goes on for pages and pages and pages with some other stuff. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can feel quite long. So do you think it's ever successful to keep going long, or it always needs to be... Um... Oh, I don't know. I, I think about, you know, like Lord of the Rings, which mm -hmm. had this very, very long denouement after the climax. You know, it's almost a whole book. Yes, with, res <laughs> with respect for Tolkien, I do remember wishing that it was not quite so long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So those are the parameters, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This, I guess this is part of why the ending a project can be so difficult, is because the ending um, has, to do, has to do so much, and it has yeah. to do it so perfectly. It's not just the story itself, mm -hmm. but you need an emotional ending. Yeah. You need a, a kind of a sense mm -hmm. of arriving at yeah. some place emotionally. And I think all of these um, roles for an ending, all of these needs and constraints, mean that... As a writer, we have less and less freedom the closer we get to the end. It's like if you were building an arch out of field stones. At the beginning, you can take any old shape of rock and put it into your structure. Okay. But as you get close to the end, you really need a That's perfectly stone. shaped rock. You can get you can get very close and then and just and then not get there and, and not mm -hmm. know how to finish it. So I've done both mm -hmm. things. I, I've, I've, I've had an ending that I didn't know how to finish, mm -hmm. but I've also written an ending and then and thought it was great. Yeah. And then sort of the next day or the next week, I go, mm -hmm. mm, I don't think it's right. Yeah. And then go back to it. You know? Go back and, and tear it yeah. apart. Yeah. And put yeah. in a new one. So that that question of judgment of knowing knowing when you've got a good ending or, or indeed knowing when something's done. Although Question. endings for short stories and endings for novels are, are somewhat different, though. And you've done a lot of short story writing. I have done a lot of short stories. When we talked about not letting someone down too quickly, well, in a short story it's compressed, so you, you, you can let your reader down with that, that little bit of a bump. We've talked before about how uh, I, I often think of, um, of writing as uh, existing within a frame, and, and, and since they are the, or your characters are real people, their lives continue off the frame. And, and so sometimes in an ending I want to capture that, that, that it's not over for them just because the story that I'm telling right. is over, yeah. but that there's more, um, more to come. Well, although that also comes in, because I write mm -hmm. multi-book um, things, and there the endings are always a bit tricky because you want to finish the story that you're telling, yeah. but you, you want to leave not just questions open, mm -hmm. But you want to leave a certain amount of tension open mm -hmm. so that the reader is motivated to go on to the next books or the other books in the series, right? Mm -hmm. So 
um, that's also a, a, a different kind of constraint on the ending. Sometimes, and I'm thinking of short stories here, but um, but this might be true of longer works. There, the story was written because there was a theme or a point that you wanted right. to make. I mean, it, it it's these character stories and the and plot and so on. But you also wanted to say something about about the human condition or about well, you kind of have to have something to say, yeah. right? Otherwise, you're, why are you writing it in the first place? And so, <laughs> in that sense. Uh, your story is over when you've made that point. point yes. uh, when you when you've com- uh, co- coherently and completely thoroughly argued that point, and then it, it ends with a wrapping up. And in an essay, that wrapping up would be a conclusion that restated all your themes. Right. But there's often a frictional equivalent, uh, a sort of um, you you end with a scene or an incident that recaps in the same way. Stories that aren't chronological do still have a sequence, it, but it might be that it is an increasing intensity, or it's um, uh, uh, slowly revealing a truth. There are some stories that require this breakup. Uh, mm-hmm. So one of the stories I'm telling is about this guy who does these absolutely terrible things, and the chronological sequence doesn't really do it, mm-hmm. uh, because a, a person who, who who does things that are that are in some sense evil, yeah. um, it doesn't arrive there by any linear process. And so it's actually easier to tell the story by breaking it up into fragments. Mm-hmm. And it tells a richer story to do it that way. So yeah. yeah. So that was a book that I started chronological. Yeah. And then I rewrote, I, I, I stopped after 200 pages, and I rewrote the first 200 pages yeah. in its fragmented way. And I think the book is much, much stronger now than yeah. it was originally. So Now, have you written the ending yet? Uh, no, <laughs> I, I left the ending because okay. it, the problem is that these books are all intertwined with other books. Mm-hmm. So I had to write the other books before I could find write the ending for this one. So uh, I'm almost finished on the other ones, and now I'm going to go back and finish the ending for that one. Mm-hmm. So. When, when things do get stuck... And when it's hard, when the ending's not coming together, um, what do you think is the cause? What do you find? Well, it's always this case where you, if you get stuck in Mm -hmm. writing, I always, um, I struggle with it for a little while and go, you know, well, I must be able to figure out a way out of this thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then I usually get to this point where I go, okay, uh, I have to back up. Because yep. it's the setup that's mm-hmm. causing the problem, and so you have to go back and rewrite the setup so that it yep. takes you to a different place, right? So yeah, um, that's usually what I end up doing to solve those kinds of problems. I think that's so true, and that's part of why I know for many writers, what works for them is to do a first draft just just beginning to end. You know, they they need to sit down and and write the whole first draft and get it out, and then they can do revisions. But I. I almost always get to a point where I'm stuck. The story just won't move forward to that ending. And in order to get to the ending, I need to go back and start ripping out things um, in the beginning and rearranging that. But that's if mm-hmm. you have an idea of what the ending is. Yes. So, um, I mean, I think usually we do. Yeah. But I think it's possible to write without necessarily knowing that. I think I used to write more things that weren't following the chronological order. Uh, and, but recently, almost as a, a practice, I've been trying to be very strict with myself and only because I found I was doing it unconsciously. I would just write down things in the order that they came into my mind. And, uh, and recently I've been trying to, to make myself write things in the order that they happened. Um, uh, and and to only only tweak the chronology purposely and for effect, and to think about what I'm doing when I do it, not to not do it, but to to do it um, more consciously. And I think and that's that uh, the effect of making myself more conscious of doing it, I think, has been beneficial. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's it for how a writer writes the endings. In the second part of this episode, we're going to talk about how a writer finishes the book. Yes, one of the hardest things that a writer has to do. (laughs) Hope you enjoyed what you heard today. Don't Mm -hmm. forget to... Subscribe. Subscribe to our 
video blog if you like what you're seeing. And see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah, see you next time. <laughs>